All right, in this video, we are going to learn about hydrates. We're going to learn how to name them and also how to write formulas for them. But before we get into any of that, we need to talk first what, about what a hydrate actually is. And I want you to think, um, when you hear the word hydrate, think about yourself hydrating. When you yourself are hydrating, that means that you are drinking plenty of water, right? A hydrate is a compound that has water attached to it. So for instance, this is what a hydrate molecule is going to look like in formula form. You have some sort of a compound that you are used to seeing and naming. And then you have a dot that's going to kind of separate that compound from the added water. You will have some sort of a coefficient and then you will have actual water. Now this is telling you that with the compound of calcium chloride, you also have three water molecules attached to it. It just helps to keep that compound stable as it sits um, before it's being used. Now a formula, I'm sorry, a name for a hydrate might look something like this. So it's going to have the name of the compound first, in this case it's magnesium sulfate, and then to state how many waters we have, we are going to use the prefixes that you used with your covalent compound naming. So in this case, we use the prefix di. So it's telling us that we have two and we refer to water molecules as hydrates when we're naming. So dihydrate means two water molecules. Okay, so this covalent prefix chart is going to um, come back now when you are naming hydrates. So now that we know the basics, let's get into naming and writing formulas. Okay, let's practice naming some hydrates. So let's take this first one, MgCl2, and we have six waters attached to that. So to start, we need to name this first compound, this MgCl2. So let's walk through our steps. First, we need to decide if it is ionic or covalent. We know that magnesium is a metal. It's in group two on the periodic table, so we know that this is ionic. We ask ourselves, is magnesium then a transition metal? We know that it is not since it's in group two. And then we ask ourselves, is there a polyatomic in this compound? There is not in this case. So we would name this like we would name just a really basic ionic compound where we would put the name of the metal. So in this case, it is magnesium. And then we would put the name of the nonmetal, the chlorine, but we're going to change the ending to I, D, E. So this becomes magnesium chloride. And then now we can add on the water portion of this compound. Now we know whenever there's water attached, the term that we use is hydrate. And then we know that we need to state how many waters are attached using these prefixes that we would have used um, for covalent compounds. So since we have six hydrates attached, we are going to use the prefix hexa. So we are going to put magnesium chloride hexa for the six. Hydrate for the water. So we have magnesium chloride hexa hydrate. And that's how you would name the first one. Let's try the second one. We ask ourselves if this is ionic or covalent. Lithium is a metal, so we know that it is ionic. We ask ourselves if this contains a transition metal. In this case, it does not. Lithium is in group one. Is there a polyatomic? In this case, there is. 
CR04 is a polyatomic that is chromate. So we are going to name this ionic compound as if um, or the same way that we named ionic compounds containing polyatomics. So we are going to write out lithium. We're going to name the polyatomic. This is chromate. And again, we don't need Roman numerals because lithium is not a transition metal. And then we're going to name the hydrate portion. So again, using this table here, we know that the prefix for two is di. So it's going to be lithium chromate di for the two, hydrate for the water, lithium chromate dihydrate. For this last one, Ask ourselves if this, if this is ionic or covalent. We know that it's ionic because manganese is a metal. Does it contain a transition metal? It does. Manganese is a transition metal. So that means we need to use Roman numerals. Does it contain a polyatomic? It does not in this case. So we are going to name this compound the same way we would name an ionic compound containing a transition metal. So we're going to start with the name of the metal, which is manganese. We need to state the charge of the manganese. For that, we can do the reverse crisscross. So we see this two here on the bromine is going to tell us that the manganese is a plus two. So we're going to put two in Roman numerals telling whoever is seeing this that the manganese is at a plus two. We're going to write the name of the nonmetal with the IDE ending. So it is manganese 2 bromide. And then we are going to name the hydrate. So to find the prefix for 4, we refer to this table here. 4 is tetra. So we have manganese 2 bromide, tetra for the 4, hydrate for the water. Now let's practice naming some hydrates on your own. So if you would please pause the video, try these three on your own, and then hit play when you are ready for the answers. So this first one, we ask ourselves in order to name this first compound, is it ionic or covalent? This is ionic because sodium is a metal. Does it contain a transition metal? No, it does not. Sodium is in group one. Does it contain a polyatomic? This does, it has sulfate. So we are going to name this sodium sulfate. The prefix for five is penta. And we refer to water as hydrate. So you should have gotten the answer sodium sulfate pentahydrate. For this one here, we know it's ionic because calcium is a metal. It is not a transition metal. It is located in group two, and it does not contain a polyatomic. So you should have named this one calcium chloride. The prefix for two is di, and we refer to the water as hydrate. So you should have gotten calcium, whoops, Calcium chloride dihydrate. For this last one down here, we know it's ionic because it contains a metal. Zinc is technically a transition metal, but we don't need to put Roman numerals because zinc is always a plus two. It cannot change. And we also have a polyatomic. So the way that you should have named this is zinc nitrate. The prefix for six is hexa, and we refer to water as hydrate. So you should have gotten zinc, nitrate, hexa, hydrate. Now let's practice writing formulas for hydrates. So for this first one here, we have barium chloride dihydrate. So let's just ignore the hydrate portion, and we are going to write the formula for barium chloride first. So barium is Ba, that is in group two on the periodic table, so we know that this is a plus two charge. Chloride is Cl, 
and we know chlorine is in group 17, so it has a minus one charge. When we crisscross those, the two on the barium would come down as a subscript on the chlorine. And then to add the hydrate portion, we are going to put a little dot. We look at the prefix on the hydrate, so we have di here. Di, if you refer to your covalent prefixes, means two. So we have two. Hydrate is referring to water. So we have two H2O on that barium chloride. Let's try the next one. Magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. Magnesium is Mg. We know magnesium is in group two on the periodic table, so that has a plus two charge on it. Sulfate is SO4. We know that has a negative two charge. We see that these are equal and opposite, so they cancel out, leaving us just with MgSO4. Next, we need to add the water portion. So we are going to put a dot. We look at the prefix here, hepta. We can refer to our prefix table that hepta means seven. So we have a seven here. And hydrate is referring to water molecules. So magnesium sulfate heptahydrate is MgSO4, seven waters. Tin for chloride hexahydrate, tin is Sn. This Roman numeral is telling us that the tin has a plus four charge. Chloride is Cl. We know chlorine has a negative one charge. When we crisscross these numbers, the four on the tin would come down as a subscript on the chlorine. We are then going to move on to our hydrate, so put a dot. We're going to look at the prefix hexa. On our table here, hexa means six. So we write a six. And hydrate is referring to water molecules, so we would write H2O. So our new formula here, we have tin chloride. This four comes from the charge on the tin. The one would come down on the tin, but we don't write that. Hexa is six. Hydrate is water. All right, let's try some practice problems with writing formulas for hydrates. So why don't you pause the video, try these three on your own, and then hit play when you are ready. All right, for this first one, we have strontium bromide trihydrate. We are going to name strontium or write strontium bromide first. Strontium, we know, is SR with a plus two charge. Bromide, you know, is Br with a minus one charge. When you crisscross those, you should get SRBr2. Next, we move on to the hydrate, so we put a dot. We look at the prefix tri. According to our covalent table, tri means three. So we're going to write a three. And then hydrate is referring, again, to water molecules. So you should have gotten SRBr2, 3H2O. For the second one, calcium is Ca with a plus two charge. Sulfate is SO4 with a minus two charge. These are equal and opposite charges, so they cancel each other out. So we are good with CaSO4. We move on to the hydrate, so we put a dot. The prefix here, di, means two. Hydrate is referring to H2O. For the last one, we're working with iron. Iron is Fe. Looking at this Roman numeral here, it's telling us that this iron has a plus three charge. Nitrate is NO3 with a minus one charge. When we crisscross these charges, we should have gotten FeNO33. We move on to the hydrate portion, so we put a dot. The prefix NONA stands for nine. 
That should be on your covalent prefix table. And hydrate is referring to water molecules. So the grand total for that should be Fe, NO3, 3, um, and 9 waters attached.